I'm in central Tasmania with Will and Ellis Bennett, and they've just invested in some brand new sheep yards. We're going to find out all about their operation. We're going to find out what makes a good sheep yard, and we're going to have a listen to a few things that you should consider if you're putting yards in in your operation. <laughs> How are you, Will? Well, thanks, Tim. How are you? Mate, I'm fantastic. Thank yeah. you very much for having me out here. And no Alice, worries. the next generation, I can't believe it. It's so good. You're so excited about what you do. Yes. Well, guys, this is one super impressive set of yards. How many sheep can you put through this in one go, Will? Uh, well, we can, we can have generally mobs of 2,000 sheep coming through but yeah it will will handle more than that but yeah generally sort of that that's about our mob sizes usually yeah now mob sizes going through these yards is important for you how many sheep do you have uh, we've got about 30,000 sheep at the moment yeah all merinos yeah. and that's on about 5,000 hectares that's right and then you've got some irrigated cropping land as well yes yeah yeah we've got uh, about 700 hectares under center pivot irrigation yeah and really... you do a little bit of trade steers as well but sheep are really your main your main focus aren't they that's right yeah yeah merinos are our main focus yep yeah and what sort of micron are you pushing these days with oh, merinos? averaging 16 micron across the flock um, at the moment, yeah. That's really the sweet spot where you want to be, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we're still pushing to get a little bit finer um, and, yeah, trying to obviously maintain our wool cut while we're doing that. Yeah, right. And while all that's happening, Alice is getting ready for the next generation. You're at University of New England. You're yeah. studying agriculture. Yeah. And you're excited about all of this. Oh, absolutely. And you've been doing some work in the yards recently, so we're going to talk about that in a little while. Yep. I'm really impressed with the layout of these yards. These are new. This is the first time you're using this sort of stuff. This is the Norton sheep, your sheep panels that you've used to construct these yards. You've switched across to these just because they're a little bit heavier. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We really like the product. We'd sort of um, seen them at field days and things like that and yep. did take us a year, year or two to actually bite the bullet and do it. But um, yep. yeah, we, we did quite a bit of research obviously on it. Big investment. You know, like you say, they're, they're very, very heavy gauge steel on there and um, yeah, very sol solid set of yards, yeah. Now you've gone for a concrete floor right through these yards and you actually did something Quite brave in my opinion, you actually poured the concrete floor before you actually put in a single post for the yards. Yeah, yeah, that's right, we did. Um, and so so Norton gave us the um, the plan layout, obviously, um, yep. and we put the, that straight into the uh, digger that had GPS in it. And So Norton gave you the plan, it was down to the centimetre for where the, all the posts go, and you loaded that into the GPS of the digger. Yes, that's right, we did that. Wow. And okay. then we, yeah, went round and bought all the holes, hoping that they were in the right spots. How many missed? No, no, it was all good. We haven't had to cut any panels and uh, okay. it all worked well, yeah. So millimetre perfect design behind those yards. Yeah, exactly. I suppose that's the advantage of dealing with someone who can custom make panels to fit. Yep. Because you actually had to fit this around an existing wool shed, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. It was designed around being able to still get the sheep in the existing doors we had um, yep. into the shearing shed. And yeah, fr from there, we, we designed the yards, really. Yeah. Yeah. So does that bring any compromises into the design when you've got existing infrastructure that you're trying to sort of design around? Uh, well, I suppose there's always, always yeah, cr creates probably the odd compromise, but it hasn't seemed to affect it that now we've got them in. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're working on a blank canvas, um, you possibly would do it a little bit differently, but it, it works really well, yeah. Now there's a couple of things with the design. We're going to start out with the floor, so let's go over and have a look at where you've got your race set up and where you've got your bugle set up and talk about how you've set that up according to the slope of the land. Yep, right on. Well, come on Tim, I'll take you through the personnel gate and we can have a look at the yards. Awesome. Now you guys have got a lot of these personnel gates, Alice. How many have you got in these yards? Yeah, I've got about eight of them just around this little area here, yeah. So if you're work this is this is the hot spot, this is where yeah. most of the labour happens. You've either got your horrible old drenching race or you've got your new sheep handler and yep. you've got your 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 loading ramp. Mm -hmm. This is where the majority of your activity is going to be. Yep. So I can go from here straight through in a line, straight out of the yards through personnel gates without jumping yep. over a single panel. Yep, that's right. That's pretty important these days, isn't Very it? Very important. Makes life much easier. Yeah, and it's hard, I suppose, well, it's hard to get labour as well, particularly when Alice is off at uni learning how to run the farm. Um, it's hard to get labour, and so you want to make life as easy as possible for people when they're working for you. Oh, definitely. One of the, one of the main reasons, along obviously with, um, you know, 
obviously looking after the animals as well and making sure they're safe and um, flowing through the yards well. But the easier that happens, obviously it's easier on your employees and, um, you know, they, they enjoy working in the yards, obviously. So you want, to, you want to look after them as much as possible. And you want Ellis to come back from uni and actually work on the home farm rather than take off to where the yards are better. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, this is a beautiful drenching race you got here, Will. Um, and Alice, I believe this was put in just for you, mate. Yeah, apparently. Um, Will, I was really surprised when we were talking before off camera, you said this is a feature of your yard design that you'd probably delete in the future. A good old drenching race. Why is that, mate? Uh, well, you think because... they're not necessary anymore? No, nah, with, with the modern sheep handlers that you can get now, and I think you're better off um, factoring that into your yard design and having it set up so that the sheep will flow through the sheep handlers. And um, obviously that's uh, the easiest way to, to drench or vaccinate the sheep. But Alice, you just love using the drenching race, don't you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard day of work, isn't it? Grabbing heads yeah. and, and sticking guns down. Yeah, You'd much yeah. rather have a sheep handler that lifts them up off the ground or squeezes yeah, them in a V. Yeah, it's much easier. Yeah, right. So interestingly enough, you guys' top tip is consider not having a drenching race, invest in handling equipment instead. That, that would be my tip, yes. Yeah, unless you have young kids wanting to drench the sheep for you or they should really learn how to do it down a drenching race I think. You reckon there's still a place for them particularly in smaller operations? <laughs> oh well no I'd, I'd, I'd say seriously consider not doing it but yeah. Alice this is a pretty impressive looking loading ramp isn't it? Yeah it is a bit flash. <laughs> it is yeah super good. Will there's been some changes to OH&S legislation recently in Australia, work, health and safety. There's a few things that loading ramps are required to have now and you, when you're upgrading you've got to keep an eye out for that, don't you? Yeah, definitely Tim, that's right. Um, yeah, this one here, as you can see, has got the, um, the uh, personal ramp up beside it um, with guardrail on it. Uh, you're, you're outside, you're not sort of working in amongst the stock and um, so that's one, one of the main features of it. Separation um, of animals from humans, guardrails for both. Yep, yeah, so that's, uh, the truck drivers seem to love it. Um, yep. Yeah, so far it's it's been really good. Now loading the trucks, do you have to put in dodgy little flaps and ramps and things to meet up with the truck or do these have a good range of adjustment? Yeah, yeah, no, really good range. Um, out at the end uh, where the truck backs into it, there's a there's a there's there's another little ramp that flicks down and goes onto the truck tray yep. um, and, and that's got its own sides on it. So, yeah, so works really well. So gaps are completely minimal. Yeah, no gaps in it And you can get to the top deck of the truck, no problem. Yeah, that's it. right. It winches up, um, win winches up to the top deck. So, yeah, works well. Are you finding that people are having trouble getting trucks to come to their property if they have poorly maintained or dangerous ramps? Oh, yeah, I think it's yeah definitely our our main carrier um, is definitely not going to some places because yeah they they struggle to get the sheep on the trucks. Yeah, right. So with the uphill flow that you've got with the sheep, with the solid floor, with really solid panels, personal access gates ramps to keep your humans free from your animals and adjustability for your loading ramps. It's not only easy to get your stock transported but they leave your farm safe and I would assume with less stress. Oh definitely they flow up really well. When when I first we were looking at the ramp and I thought oh it just looks way too wide. I think the sheep will be turning around and things yeah, like that. A yeah. lot wider than our old old ramp but they just go up obviously side by side or three abreast and they, they, they fly up there. Yeah. yeah, right. So loading's quick. Oh, it is. It's, it's really quick and, yeah. How important for you as a sheep producer is it that your sheep arrive at the destination with low stress? Oh, it's critical. Yeah, yeah no bruising and, yeah, yep. So yards are a vital part of any farm. If people are going to look at designing their yards around old infrastructure, what would be two or three takeaways that you have from your experience? Because you've designed a few now. Yeah, yeah, I think that um, obviously, um, yeah, you want to get rid of your old old yards out of the way and, and look at it as a as a blank canvas and yep. um, re really start again. Sort of initially thought we'd be able to incorporate some of our old ones and realised to be much better off just starting again. So. Um, 
Um, yeah, getting good advice. I mean, um, obviously the Norton guys that have done this for us have been really good and, you know, sat down with us and we changed the design and played around with it and ended up with a really good product. And they understand the Australian conditions and they give you plans that are centimetre perfect so that you can pre-drill your holes but when you put your concrete floor in. And I still don't know if I'd have the guts to do that, but you did and got away with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're lucky, I suppose, too, aren't we? <laughs> Guys, if you want centimetre perfect, safe, easy to use yards, check out the link to Norton below. And if you found some use or interest in this story, make sure you hit the subscribe button and send this video to someone who needs to get their loading ramp in order because it's time guys it's time will thanks Tim. alice thank, thank you. you so much <laughs> see you next week i'm in central tasmania with will and uh, alice alice i was nearly called you allison sorry <laughs> oh, i'm so <laughs> this job i really shouldn't do it alice <laughs> Well, Tim, let's go through this personnel gate and I can show you the ramp. <laughs> now, oh, we had a laugh there. We can't laugh. Oh. Can't laugh. You've got to have some energy. Let's go. Okay. But not, it's serious. It's, we're, we're serious about serious. our sheep. Yeah, serious. it's very serious. Okay. Well, come on, Tim. I'll take you through the personnel gate. We'll go and have a look at the ramp. Okay. Off you go. Well, come on, Tim. I'll take you.